Hello, folks. Welcome to Jeremy Hadler's YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jeremy Hadler. And today, we'll be still continuing the GOAT series, Centers. We'll be doing some center of the offensive line work here. And we have a special guest coming back once again the GOAT series, Mr. Zachary Brazik. Woo! Thank you, Jeremy, for having me on. Happy so, to be back after, uh, you know, we did special teams. And now defense isn't my thing, but I'm happy to be back for the O-line. It's great. So we have Zach here being our center uh, specialist today. And then we'll be going, as I mentioned again, through the GOAT series, we going through, as we mentioned, with the special teams, defense, still going through that offensive line. We're going to have wide receivers from our last video. So make sure you go look at that if you haven't already. And then we go and still get to the offensive line. And then we'll get to everyone's favorite position, the quarterback. Ooh. And a special Ooh. twist, we'll be having surprise in that. We're having surprise. So stay tuned for that. But let me remind you guys of the rules here once again. If you're not already familiar with the GOAT series, I pick five players on this list, not ranked whatsoever. Then I pick an honorable mention. And if I have a guest on, they have the opportunity to pick an honorable mention if they want to, or they stick with my honorable mention, their choice. Zach has an honorable mention, so we'll get to see for that. We make the case of why they should be in the conversation through their achievements, their impact on the field, how they dominated the game, is how it's categorized and everything. And then the end of the episode, we both get to choose our ultimate GOAT for the position, and that's how it goes. Before we start, make sure you leave a like on the screen and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Do that. Try and get a 250 subs. Try and do that. Mr. Brazik, what is a center? A center, one of the most classic timeless positions in football. It hasn't changed a lot in the last 50, 60 years. It's just a classic position. A center is the anchor of your offensive line where every play of every football game ever starts except like kickoffs every play starts with the center he mm -hmm. is in the middle of the five players in the offensive line he is handling the ball he is making reads to tell the guards who to block for he is obviously he needs to snap it to the quarterback either under center or snap it five yards back and with the center i remember from my couple of years of playing football it's your first step is very important because a lot of centers especially if you go watch like middle school football like 13 year olds play football the centers will just snap it and then do nothing no you got to snap it and then instantly get that good first step into your lineman you got to use the leverage i'm mm -hmm. gonna say the word leverage about 100 times this video <laughs> use the leverage after the snap to get into the defender or go up to the linebackers or pull outside and obviously got a run block you got a pass block mm -hmm. and they're very key for, like I said, they need to have a high football IQ call out where the guard should go and very key position. As you hear from our specialist, now let's get into our honorable mention here. Let's start off the guest here. Mr. Zach Brazik, what do we have here for your honorable mention? Okay. So for my honorable mention, I wanted to pick a player from my lifetime, New York Jets legend and Ooh. A uh, amazing center, Nick Mangold. Woo! Nick Mangold. I mean, you talk about some of the best hair in NFL history. <laughs> and he made that one great advertisement for like Coca Cola or some beer. I forget what it was, where it comes out the freezer. Mm -hmm. Fantastic guy. Let's get into the stats. Played 11 seasons, all for the Jets. Seven time Pro Bowler. Two time first team All Pro. At the AFC Championship game, two years in a row with the Woo. Jets. Fun yeah. fact about Nick Mangold, very random, but I saw this. He went six years without a false start, which is pretty rare. I mean, centers don't get that yes. many false starts. Like, it's usually a tackle, but centers still can get false starts by, you know, flinching or something. So, mm -hmm. six years in a row, no false starts. Very impressive. What I love about Nick Mangold is he was the center of those two Jets teams that almost made the Super Bowl and beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. Fun team. He's just a strong, great character guy. Very high football IQ. He was mostly known for his run blocking and run game and also making Mark Sanchez kind of good, helping him actually have a few good years. And yeah, just a great player. So we got Nick Mangle here as Zach's honorable mention here. Now we get to my honorable mention here. So many times I had to go through this and then I had to ask Zach, how do I track the stats of a center, whether it's like sacks allowed, false starts, like all that kind of stuff. And to me, this one had to be in the conversation. I didn't put him higher in the list because he did not have a lot of Frank Gore seasons in him. But this guy had eight seasons, all with one franchise, and that was with the Miami Dolphins. That is Dwight Stevenson. He is a one-time NFL Man of the Year award. 
four-time first-team All-Pro, one-time second-team All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler, made the 80s All-Decade team, made the 100th anniversary team. What I very noticed about him is how quick he was as soon as he stops the ball. he make that quick move right away against the nose tackle and get him out of the way. He'd be very instinct and knew what to do right away. That was a nice thing I learned about him. He's very competitive, hardworking. The amount of work he put in, the practices and the games, and very good. That's why he was very quick because he knew right away what was going to happen. Zach, what do you make of him? Yeah, Dwight Stevenson, I really don't know why he only played eight years, but it was an amazing eight years indeed. As you said, the one-time NFL man of the year. Wasn't a loud, you know, expressive player like Nick Mangold, but he was a great guy, very smart IQ, which is very key at the center position, like we were saying. Him and Larry Little, who I'm sure we'll talk about in one of the guard videos, yep. they helped anchor an amazing Dolphins offensive line that was really best in the league for a few years and yeah just an amazing player and I think if he played three more years he would probably be in the Hall of Fame that's why I put him down here a little because the eight seasons like like he could have played a lot more years uh to me I think it was the injuries like that kind of impacted him a bit there that's why he retired early if he stayed more healthy I definitely think he could have been way higher in this list and play maybe the most amount of seasons as the rest of these guys on the list but the rest of these guys they are up to 15, 16 seasons on this list here. So that's pretty hard to do. And given the fact they play eight seasons in the NFL, that's also incredible too. Like, because not many players last that long in the NFL, especially offensive line, because if you're a late draft pick, which that won't last long, you probably maybe get two, three years, then your cuts. Like with him, he was come right out of it and he played a lot of years, even though it was small compared to the rest of these guys. He still got the job done though. So that's pretty impressive to me though. Very true. Very true. Let's get to our next player here, which this is the only active player on the list here. Now, me and Zach both know this player very well because we're not fans of the football team, but we're from the place. We're from that place. This guy played 12 seasons so far with the Philadelphia Eagles. That is Jason Kelsey, one-time Super Bowl champion. You all remember his Super Bowl speech at the parade. He's a five first-team All-Pro, six-time Pro Bowler. Watching him, very athletic. He could outrace some of his own teammates that were not offensive line or defensive line players. Some of them are maybe like a tight end or a wide receiver. He was so good in trenches because that's what the whole offensive line I like to call is the trenches. Much bigger guy, even though he's undersized coming out of college. Very strong, faster player of like taking the defensive lineman out. And also a very consistent player. You rarely saw him mess up. So that was the thing that stuck out to me. Zach, what do you think about Jason Kelsey? Yeah, I love Jason Kelsey. I remember like two months ago when you told me you were doing a center's list. I told you that Jason Kelsey better be on there. <laughs> and here he is. I made sure of it. Yes, and I do love Jason Kelsey. As Jeremy said, he's like smaller for a modern day center. Like he looks kind of small in the huddle yeah. next to like Lane Johnson and Jordan Mailata. But for him, that's really a good thing because he is like the best center at polling and what polling means is you know you uh, after ball snap you like run to the outside to get the linebackers and his size helps him with that because he's yeah. smaller he's quicker but he's just as powerful and jason kelsey was like a six round pick out of college because of his size and he is a tremendous player basically he made the qb sneak rigged last year him and jalen hurts rigged every fourth and one that there is with the qb sneaks and it was kind of annoying but you got to give it up for jason kelsey he was on rail at that great job jason kelsey and he's still amazing he is still playing up numbers did it work yes did jason kelsey get the job done absolutely the ruling of the quarterback sneak was almost ruled out by the nfl this offseason of how it was all set up fortunately they did not get rid of the rules so now the eagles can keep doing more and more jason was in the this past super bowl against his brother the kelsey bowl as most people call it Travis Kelsey won the game with the Kansas City Chiefs over the Philadelphia Eagles. A statement to make that since Brian Dawkins, like after Brian Dawkins, he is, and I would say by far the most important Eagle of like the last 15 years. I mean, he, he, just because of how long he's been there, he, he just helped him do that QB sneak thing. And just every year he's been there. He's amazing. Interesting takeaway. That is very interesting with Brian Dawkins, you're calling that. I would put him up there, but also with Fletcher Cox is another player I put up there for that. So that's as close. Yeah. Between that, but I will agree with you of the Jason Kelsey part of the Brian Dawkins, but he can still go so many years. It's just like, does he want to play the game anymore? Cause he could go longer if he really want to. He's only like 35 years old. He needs to go like a three or four more years in my opinion with him. But now let's move on to our next player, which this is the Frank Gore of the list. We almost had a three-way tie in this list as a Frank Gore, which was almost rare. 
But this guy just nailed it out by one more season. This guy played 16 seasons with the Seattle Seahawks, the New York Jets, majority of the time was with the Jets, and the Tennessee Titans. That is Kevin Wave. Kevin Wave is a seven first team all pro, one time second team all pro, eight time pro bowler, made the 2000s all decade team, made the all rookie team his rookie year, got inducted to the Jets ring of honor. Interesting fact about him. He's the first native Hawaiian to get inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. What do you think of him, Jack? Kevin uh, Mawai is a amazing center. I find it really crazy how like the Jets went from Kevin Mawai to Nick Mangold. I didn't realize that, how good centers they had. But Kevin Mawai, I mean, the main thing with him is, I mean, he was a good pass blocker, but his run blocking was just unbelievable. I saw the stat today that 13 out of his 16 seasons, his team had a 1,000-yard rusher. One of those was Chris Johnson's 2,000-yard season uh, when he was with the Titans. And he wasn't even that known with being with the Titans, but he was still awesome when he was on the Titans. Not a player you hear about a lot. I feel like most people don't know he's even in the Hall of Fame, I feel. Yeah. He's, but the dude was rock solid. Like, linemen don't get the love they deserve. No, they don't. And uh, Kevin Mawai was amazing. I mean, just ask Curtis Martin yep. or Chris Johnson or Thomas Jones or Sean Green or any of the running backs he's played with, and they would all, I'm sure, absolutely love him. Three of you of the running game, he was very effective in that. That's one of the things that scouts me out of the rest of these guys. He was one of the most effective guys with the run blocking game. Just an amazing player. He was also the NFLPA president for a couple of years. People don't know about that either. I mean, most people don't care about the PA president, but it's an interesting fact that we should know about that. It's a very interesting thing that we should know because he gets to run the whole Players Association and represents the players of the NFL for them and helps make decisions with the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell. The 16 seasons, no one does that. And especially how he had seven first team all pros. Eight Pro Bowls, I mean, yeah, it's impressive, but I always say that's a popularity contest. That's how I always view all-star pro games in sports. But the seven first team up pro, that's very impressed to me. So now let's move on to our next player, which this player played for both the Green Bay Packers, my team, and the Philadelphia Eagles, but mostly my team, the Green Bay Packers. 15 seasons, Jim Ringo was part of the Lombardi uh, reign, but he was also there before. Two-time NFL champion. Seven first team all pro, two times second team all pro, 10 time Pro Bowl. I mean, I said that the popularity contest, but still, that's impressive to get the Pro Bowl 10 times. Be the 60s all tech 18. Made the Hall of Fame for the Packers and the Eagles, and also got inducted to the NFL Hall of Fame. The thing that really stuck out to me when Vince Lombardi, the Packers head coach at the time, always had his famous pay, the Packers Jet Sweep. He was a part of that. He was a part of that run play every time, which stuck out to me because. Every time you watch that play of the jet sweep of the Green Bay Packers, was Jim's speed was very good and how he mobility of like being able to run, like how Kelsey was undersized. Jim Ringo was also undersized. So the smarter the guys are, they have better mobility and can will be able to knock out the defenders out of the way and make some room for the running backs. He was a part of helping out Jim Taylor's five 1,000-yard rushing uh, yard season. So he helped Jim Taylor during those five seasons of getting able to 1,000 rushing yards. He just helped out the team, and he was an incredible player to watch. I mean, I never got to watch him personally, but looking through him, researching about him, incredible to learn about this player. Zach, what do you think of him? Yeah, so same with past videos. When there's a Packer, I usually just let Jeremy say everything, but I have a couple things to say. Ooh. One thing that I find really interesting is how he's a Packers and Eagles Hall of Famer because usually when like you I'd play for two teams – like, on one of them, you're eh, you know, you kind of, like, fall off. But, no, with both of these teams, he was amazing. And, like, if Vince Lombardi really trusts you, like, coaches, especially back in the day, love their linemen. And Vince Lombardi with that famous play you were talking about. Yep. Just an uh, amazing guy. Good add to the list. Here's something interesting, too. There's one other player that got inducted into the Packers Hall of Fame and the Eagles Hall of Fame. Do you know who that is? That would be probably Reggie White. Yes. Let's go. That's the interesting thing. Most people know about the Reggie White because a lot of Eagle fans, Packer fans say, oh, he was mostly known for being Eagle, mostly known being for Packer. They don't talk about Jim Ringo. I mean, he's very known for being the Packers, but no one talks about him that very much. So I like to give appreciation to the offensive linemen. I believe they need more recognition and more deserving, but not the most because that's special teams. We already said that that's special teams deserves it the most. The offensive linemen 
need the appreciation once again. In basketball terms, I'll claim like the big man coming back in the game, the centers. They're coming back into the game and rejuvenating it. Jason Kelsey is doing that once again. He's doing that. Jim Ringo should deserve more credit, I believe, in my opinion. Let's get to our next guy, which this guy also played 15 seasons. As I mentioned, it was very close to the Frank Gorlis. Very close. Which, if you don't know what the Frank Gore term means, it means they play the most seasons at the position. Quick shout out to punter Sean Landetta for being the first ever Frank Gore. This guy played 15 seasons with two franchises. Majority time was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is Mike Webster. Mike Webster is a Four-time Super Bowl champion, six first-team All-Pro, two second-team All-Pro, nine-time Pro Bowler, made the 70s and 80s All-Decade team, made the 75th and 100th anniversary team, made the All-Rookie team, made the Steelers All-Time team, got inducted to the Steelers Hall of Honor, which is basically the Ring of Honor. He was a part of that Steelers offensive line back in the 70s from the, when they won the four Super Bowls from 1974 to 79. He was the main guy, part of that offense line to help them with the trenches and help them win the Super Bowls. Just amazing player, too. Just amazing. Zach, what do you think about him? Yeah, Mike Webster. I do love Mike Webster. He's probably my favorite stealer of all time, which is hard for me to wow. say. As a Browns fan, amazing player. He won four Super Bowls in a five-year period with Terry Bradshaw and the Immaculate Reception. All that nine Pro Bowls, like you said, and he played so hard. He just like mauled players, but he still played with good technique and form. Like back in the 70s, some players would just go out there and, you know, like WWE, you know, <laughs> elbows and stuff because it was allowed. But <laughs> but Mike Webster still played with amazing form. He helped Franco Harris. <clears throat> I mean, of course, Franco Harris is amazing too, but yep. Mike Webster helped them become even more amazing. Just an absolute legend, run blocker and pass blocker. I want to say a quick rest in peace to Mike Webster. I mean, I know a couple of these players have passed, but he did. Uh, he was like the first player ever who played football to be diagnosed with CTE. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to just say my respect to Mike Webster. Uh, he played his heart out, that's for sure. And uh, he's here. As we give our rest in peace to Mike Webster, we also like to give recognition to the other players. Jim Ringo is the other one, and then we'll get to another one eventually. But basic players so far in this list here. Let's round it out here before we pick our ultimate goats. Last player. This guy also played 15 seasons. I mentioned very close of the Frank Gore. This was with one franchise. Very rare for a player to play with your franchise for 15 seasons. That is Jim Otto. Jim Otto, a one first team all pro, one second team all pro, Three-time Pro Bowler, made the 100th anniversary team, one-time AFL champion, nine-time first-team All-AFL, nine-time AFL All-Star, so it's Pro Bowl, and he made the AFL All-Team. For folks that don't know what the AFL means, it was the American League Conference, and there was the National Football Conference. Both of them combined to merge as the whole NFL. So this was the pre-before Super Bowl era. So that's letting you know that Jim Otto won a championship he made the first team, if we're going NFL terms, he was a nine-time first-team All-Pro, but plus the first team he made officially in the NFL, that'd be 10-time. And then with the Pro Bowls, he would be 12, all included, and made the all-time team in the AFL. Looking at him, of researching about him, very tough player. He had to fight through so many injuries, and he was the nail in the coffin when it came to it, battling the trenches. He did the job right. He's one of the first players to establish what the NFL center was. What do you think of him? Yeah, Jim Otto, classic number double zero. Um, amazing player under John Madden. Um, one of John Madden's personal favorite players. Played extremely hard. He was uh, one of the first centers to really excel in pass blocking as well as run blocking. And he was just a really tough guy, obviously. I saw like some clip a while ago, like on the NFL Top 100 Players of All Time, where he said he basically broke his nose uh, almost every single game, but he never cared. He uh, just played so hard in that old school era, similar to Mike Webster. He was a little before Mike Webster. And yeah, just one of the first centers that anyone knows. So that's really pretty impressive. Let us commence to our GOAT. Now, here we go. The GOAT will start with our special guest here to start out with, Zach. Pick your GOAT. So this was a really hard one to pick a GOAT for me. I, I was between three players. I was thinking Jim Otto a little, but I think he's a little too early to put him because centers were different back then. I was very tempted to put Jason Kelsey because of why I just love how, in my opinion, he really built the Eagles 
dynasty. I don't mean it's a real dynasty. That's why I did that. <laughs> but he's helped make the Eagles good for the last decade straight. But I am going to go here with Mike Webster. He is just who I think of when I think old school centers. He is by far the most championships. And he really helped build that, like Terry Bradshaw, Franco Harris, Lynn Swan, like just uh, all of these great Steelers legends that you hear of. Uh, Mike Webster was an amazing part of that too. Played so hard, I would say, if you add in the pass and run blocking, he was the most balanced and between the two. He's always been a favorite of mine, so I'm going to give Mike Webster the nod in a close race. For me, going into this, I had an answer. that through this video so far, it has started to change. This has come down to three players, in my opinion. Mike Webster, Jim Otto, Jim Ringo. I want to give it to Jim Otto, but as Zach brought up, it was very different of how it was for an offensive lineman. Very different of how you would see the normal. Even though he had the many accomplishments and played 15 seasons. However, I'm going to have to give it to Jim Ringo. That's not because he was a Packer. That's not because of it. It was because of how dominant he was and at his position. Also with Mike Webster, too. Amazing guy with his trenches and the Super Bowl time with the Sears. But Jim Ringo, he helped establish with Vince Lombardi that jet sweep. He established that and got the job done. He kept being dominant and consistent throughout the time. Helped Jim Taylor with the Packers running back at the time, helped him with those 1,000 yard seasons for five years in a row. So, in my opinion, I'm going to have to give it to Jim Ringo. This is not being biased whatsoever. So, that's telling you guys, not being biased because he's a Packer. But Jim Ringo here, I'm going to have to give it as my ultimate goat. Wow. Somewhat shocking to me. But I mean, yeah, I mean, the centers, I mean, it's a simple kind of position. It's the most simple position on the offensive line, I would say. And there's, so many great guys have done it for a long time, so I've, I have nothing against the pick at all. Well, folks, that does here. We appreciate you coming on, Zach. Where can the people find you before you head out? You can find me on Instagram at BSC Cards uh, to see sports cards, football history on cardboard people. Nice, nice. Uh, folks that don't know already, he reached his goal of over 1,200 followers on his uh, Instagram. So congrats to you on that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jeremy. So we get that. Uh, for me, you guys always know where we're heading here. We still continue with the GOAT series. Sub to, the, sub to the channel. We're trying to get to 250 subs. Please, just sub to the channel. Come on, we're trying to get there. We're almost Please there. Sub. We're almost there, guys. We're less than 15 subs away. Please just help me get there. I'll make it fun for you guys when you get hit 250. We'll make it fun. So yeah, got that. Appreciate everyone watching the GOAT series still here. If you're still continuing with this, as we started all the way from a couple months ago with Zach and me just doing special teams when we did long snapper and punter, we did not think anyone would be watching that. But somehow you guys have watched it for so long and still continuing with watching it so far. So we appreciate you for tuning in. And we'll be having Zach on for a couple more episodes here there to make it more fun because you guys have liked Zach so far and he's the only one who's been commenting in the uh, videos. So I'd like to have him come on more for that purpose. So we're having him come on. But yeah, folks, we appreciate it. That's a wrap for the studio. We'll be seeing you next time on the Jeremy Heller's YouTube channel. We'll be seeing you next time, folks. Have a great day. Have a fun time. Thank you all.